Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're here for the first time, I'm Sarah and I'm a graphic designer with a passion for organization and budgeting. Today I'm going to be talking about my home management binder and why I think it's an essential organizational piece for families and individuals alike. Plus I'll be giving you a tour of what ours or rather mine <laughs> actually looks like and what we use it for. So first off, what is a home management binder, right? I think probably those of you who are unfamiliar with the term are probably questioning that right now. I view a home management binder or a household binder or whatever, a hub for all of your important documents, your day-to-day -day references, or general things that your family or yourself needs to access on a regular basis and always wants to have organized. For us, this tends to be like an, more of an important documents thing. This is in case of emergency, grab this binder and go. We keep our passports in it, our car titles, um, tax information, uh, contact information, a whole bunch of other stuff that you'll see in the tour later. But it's really useful because all of those things are in one place, right? You just have to grab this one binder. I'm looking over here because here it is. Grab this one binder and you're good to go. You have all of the information that you need and all of your important documents in one place. Why use one? Why is this a good system? Um, there's a ton of reasons to use one, but the main one is organization. What if you stop forgetting your mom's birthday because you always had somewhere that you could reference back to? What if you stop losing important documents like your car registration or that receipt that you meant to keep and somehow got lost in the shuffle? Or what if your partner stopped asking you for your Amazon login because they knew where to reference to go find that information? It's also really helpful from a input and output kind of scenario. So if you have a lot of mail, you get a lot of bills, that kind of thing, having a system that all of those papers pass through and either get you know recycled or shredded or filed appropriately is really helpful long-term, especially the more responsibilities you take on in life it's just good to have the kind of systems early so that you can eliminate the overwhelm later on when you have these stacks of paper all over the place, like I think probably a lot of us do. <laughs> so now I'm going to flip the camera down and give you an actual full tour of our home management binder and what it looks like. So full disclosure, I have an Etsy shop where I sell a whole bunch of fun printables to get started with your binder. But in reality, all you really need is a binder and maybe some dividers that I'll show you inside. Printables are helpful because they give you a jumping off point and you can print all of these guys off at home, but they're definitely not a necessity. Another thing, just opening it up, that is definitely not a necessity, but that I really like is having um, page protectors. I personally believe that it keeps everything neat and tidy. Um, and you don't run into things like ripped hole punches or whatever. Plus you can use uh, dry erase markers on page protectors so that um, you know you can reuse sheets and waste a little bit less paper if you're okay with um, you know like using a monthly tracker and wiping it clean at the end if you don't need to copy that information down. But of course instead of using page protectors you can just um, hole punch them and put them into a normal binder. I personally designed all of my printables to be able to be hole punched without going through anything important. Hole punching important documents like your car title isn't always the best idea or original documents isn't always the best idea, but it's really all up to preference. I think that for myself using page protectors, these are from Office Depot, I'll link them below, um, are just, it's just the better option for me personally. Also normally these pages would all be filled out. So like the front cover, um, the blank family or the property of, and just all of the printables basically would be filled out. Of course, you'll notice very quickly that a lot of them hold a lot of sensitive information. So I've just included blank copies instead of our own personal copies in a lot of cases. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with the home management binder tour. Also, I'm gonna apologize in advance for um, any glare that's coming off these page protectors, but we'll just go ahead and get started anyways. So up at the front, I have this Manila folder, just one of those like, you know, regular little guys that has our passports on it. So it's labeled and it has a little paper clip just so that it doesn't slide around because it is kind of a thick little guy. First, I just have like a cover page. I think opening it up and seeing something cute and nice is just really motivating. And then we have these dividers that I talked about. Um, these are from Amazon Basics, as you can see backwards at the bottom, but um, I really like them. I think that as you can see, they make everything a lot easier to access 
and I just really enjoy them. And again, those will be linked below. So important documents. Um, first off is the individual info. So these are things like um, blood type, right? Like how many people have their whole family's blood type or social security number memorized off the top of their head. I know I don't. So then we have the emergency contacts. I use this kind of as a general contacts. Like this is our parents are on here and our siblings and things like that. Just general information about uh, the people in your life. It's also good, you know, if you have kids or anything like that, it's nice to have this and you could teach them where this is and get to that as well. Next, the account login sheet that I know I referenced at the beginning, but this is so useful just for keeping track of any of your like banking information. This is like a very obvious one that I would want to keep private because it does have all of our account login information but um, you have space for like your account, your usernames and your passwords, depending on what you're doing. Next, this is a sheet that I just put in here for um, fun sake because I don't have kids or a pet, but we have the pet sitter info and the babysitter info. So things like what can they eat for dinner or what activities do you suggest that they do? Um, any emergency information, like where are you gonna be? That kind of stuff. This would be a really good one to laminate and redo. And then we have the, um, pet information, which is the same, you know, like if somebody's pet sitting, what are they going to need to know about your animals? Also in this section is the celebration calendar and holiday card recipients. I found that this is the easiest way for us to keep track of everything, but basically celebration calendar is your birthdays, anniversaries, um, graduations, any kind of things that you would want to remember, maybe on a yearly basis. If you keep forgetting your mom's <laughs> birthday or your sister's birthday or your friend's birthday, I have this all filled out and then I also have it on my phone in my like Google Calendar or iCalendar or whatever. And it just makes it really easy because you can always reference it back and nobody is ever gonna get forgotten. I like to send a lot of cards. This goes hand in hand with this holiday card recipient printable that again we keep printed out and it's really easy to have them next to each other because maybe at the beginning of the month you go okay I want to send cards for May birthdays cool the people that you're sending cards to are probably the same as your holiday card recipients so yeah that is important documents as far as what we put in here you'll see that a lot of other important documents have their own section but moving on this is the cleaning schedule section. This might seem like overkill for some people, but I find that having this kind of thing is just really helpful because you don't have to think about it. So you have your cleaning schedule, which is a weekly, so Sunday through Saturday, um, what tasks you want to accomplish daily, monthly, and deep clean areas. So like um, I have, I think it's on Thursdays to deep clean an area. So like bathroom cabinets might be one or your laundry room or something like that where if you have a running list of things that you want to organize in the future, it's really easy to fill that in and plug and play. So we keep one of these on the fridge. I love them. I think they're the best. <laughs> Monthly cleaning tracker is, you know, you can circle the month and then go through and say, okay, how often did I vacuum or that kind of thing? This is really good to use in coordination with this so that you can tell, okay, I need to wipe down the cabinets once a week to feel like things are clean. Okay, then I can put it on Monday or whatever. We actually use themes over here. So like Wednesday's laundry day, I do the household laundry, especially now that I'm working from home, it's like super easy to do laundry on Wednesdays. That's all of that kind of stuff. Next, a deep clean checklist. I have some of these filled in, but we also put our own. These would depend on, of course, what kind of home you're living in and how much deep cleaning you need to be doing. Also yearly cleaning tasks. So say you want to go through your holiday decorations every winter, right? Like every January 1st, you go through your holiday decorations and see what you can get rid of. This is just a good thing to have reference for so that you those things or like cleaning out the gutters right that's a really good yearly task but you do it during fall so this when did i last i think is also a really helpful thing to use so when did you last deep clean the oven i never remember that is it due do i need to be doing it soon um and you have space for multiple dates so that you can keep track of it over time 
Next is the money matters section, save money and money will save you. Um, like I said at the beginning, this is one of my passions and I very much so think that this is a very, very good thing to have in your home management binder or I mean even in your separate finances binder. So first, I think starting high level with your financial goals is really, really helpful. So say you want to buy a house or a new laptop or save for a vacation or pay off your debt or that kind of stuff. Um, having it at the beginning of this kind of section is just good to keep you grounded and keep you moving towards those goals. This is a quarterly save and spend is what I call it, which is essentially how much money did you save for each of your savings goals a quarter? I think that this is a really good way to break it down. And um, the quarterly spend. So I also find it really helpful to look at the percentages that I s spent for each of these categories. So how much of my total income or total spending went towards my want category, my need category, and my savings category. And I think that that's really good. Also just to kind of give yourself a little checkup and determine whether your where your money is going is aligning with your goals. Next, savings tracker. So say you wanted to, um, like I said, those financial goals, you could break it down. So you could say, okay, I wanna save a laptop for a laptop and my new laptop is gonna be $1,000. There's 20 boxes, right? So you divide it and then say how much each box is worth. I'll put up on the screen what this kind of looks like filled out but I think this is really helpful because you can check off or put stickers or color it in with a highlighter or whatever, and then you can visually see and keep your motivation for reaching your savings goals. We are very, very fortunate to be debt-free at this point, but if you had kind of debts, um, like a worksheet for keeping track of your debt would be really good to have in this section too. Um, you know, your minimum payment, the balance, that kind of thing, you could print this off as many times as you needed. And I think that that kind of thing is really helpful as well. Finally, a monthly budget overview. So this is, we have a bunch of them. That's all these guys flipped over, over here. A bunch of them that are used basically just to track our income and how much we're spending like on groceries every month. So one of these line items would be groceries and saving for a down payment for a house. So that kind of thing would be down here. And then you can really easily look back and say, okay, can I cut my grocery budget down by $10? This is what I've spent over the last six months. Very, very, very helpful. Like I said, these are all of our monthly budgets. So you can kind of see the onset of that there. But let us go to the car maintenance section. For car maintenance, um, I'm not gonna show a ton of this section because understandably, it's a lot of important car documents. So this first sheet is the car maintenance records printable, which just says, when was the last time I got my tires rotated or had an oil change or had your 30,000 mile checkup or whatever. So also in this section, we keep our proof of insurance, um, any information about when we were purchasing the car, so like how many miles it had on it. We actually have like all of the information from when the car was actually purchased, <laughs> like the original printout and stuff like that, and the title to the car and any other important car related documents, which are all under the um, car maintenance tab in this binder. Also in this section, this is the car the back of the car maintenance section, we have um, information about registration. So we keep like the original registration that you're not supposed to keep in your car in here. Next is meal planning. I am convinced that groceries and meal planning are one way that a lot of people could benefit budget-wise and organization-wise over long-term. But the flow of the way that we organize these things is first freezer inventory, meal plan, and grocery list. And I'm gonna explain why. The way to save money on your groceries is to start with what you already have. So what do you have in your freezer? What do you have in your fridge that's gonna go bad or that you could use? Then what meals could you make out of that, right? So planning your dinner or your breakfasts or what you need to prep ahead of time, that kind of thing. And then once your meal plan is done, you would move into your grocery list. So, you know, making a actual grocery list that says, okay, we have, um, I don't know, we have shrimp that we want to use up. Okay, so we're going to make shrimp scampi over here. And okay, well we have pasta, but we need lemons. So I'm gonna go ahead and put lemons in the produce section, that kind of thing. 
Then the final section in here is go-to recipes. So I just made this pot roast the other night that I put in here. My mom also gave us a bunch of recipes when I first moved out. Those are some good things to have in this section as well, like go-to recipes. Um, depending on how many recipes you have, I don't do most of the cooking and um, my husband really likes looking at recipes on his phone. So this section isn't super robust for us, but it's also good just to have like, you know, a section of, if I make a recipe that's really easy to copy down, um, I'll put it in this section as well. So these final sections are ones that I'm not really going to go through over because they're essentially all important slash sensitive documents. We have immunization records, test records, like if we have a blood test or things like that, all are in here. Um, we also have taxes, which I guess I can flip to. We have all of our taxes. So I keep our tax information. This says 2016, but it's really 2013. The best thing to do with your tax information is keep it for seven years. Theoretically, that's as long as the IRS will slash can audit you. Um, so we keep all of our tax returns. This isn't all of it technically because I was doing a lot of freelancing and like 1099 type work in 2016, 2017, 2018. And so all of those deductible business receipts, et cetera, are um, in another folder so they don't bulk this up. And because I just want an overview generally with this kind of thing. We also have academics back here, which is like our college um, diplomas or academic transcripts or things like that. If you, have, if you need information, if you're still in school, having a section like this is also really useful. These are not things that I technically, oh, these are not things that I technically keep in our binder, but these are things that you could keep in yours if you would find that this is useful for you. You could add more things to this depending on what the schedule of your family is. So for us right now, we are still in the middle of the worldwide pandemic. So we're not doing tons of calendar and planning stuff. But you know, you could have overviews of 2021, 2022, um, a monthly calendar or, you know, monthly habit trackers, a weekly calendar. So if you're super, super busy, um, this kind of thing can be used to track class schedules, vacation itineraries, um, just a normal week and like your extracurricular family activities. If you have a ton of kids or something like that. Also, we don't own a home, but I bet your binder would be a lot bigger um, if you do. So like our home kind of things would be paint color trackers, home maintenance project type tracking, um, anything that you want to update in the future. Again, projects and repair lists. So say you need a new fence and you want to set goals for when you want to have that done. Contractor list. So you have your plumber information or your electrician information or your general contractor information all in one spot. If you were doing any big projects, you could keep a tracking document with all of the costs that you're using. You know, you're redoing your kitchen, you're doing a kitchen remodel and you're calculating, okay, cabinets cost this much, your new countertops cost this much, you've spent this much on hardware or you know recessed lighting or whatever also a planning sheet so again if you were doing a kitchen remodel these kind of things would be really good to keep on hand and then you have all of that information for future projects right so if you're wondering oh how much did we spend on that again the cabinets cost how much money your friend asks or you're you want to do a similar thing in the future so yes, that is basically our home management binder. Um, like I have said multiple times throughout this video, all of these things, including the binder, the dividers, the printables, and the page protectors will all be linked down below if you are curious. Um, but genuinely, I really, really love this system. I think that it makes everything a lot easier to manage. So, you know, things that come in, maybe I determine whether they're important or not. So like we have in here in the money section, quarterly reports from our retirement accounts, that goes in here and you just know where it is. It's all in one place and it's really easy to access if you need it. Plus it's all in one place so you can grab it and go. You know, when you're moving, you just have this one binder and you just take it with you and then you're not worried about, oh my gosh, we lost the car title. <laughs> so that is our home management binder. So thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss my next video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.